420 KHTS, your hometown station. Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour. We're streaming live at hometownstation.com and on your KHTS mobile app, so make sure you download that. But uh, we are sitting with Dr. Feldman. Dr. Feldman, she's the... Uh, the she runs. She runs Prima Pediatrics. She's so the, they say. The head Rick ha- runs me. <laughs> the, hun- the head honcho over at Prima Pediatrics. PrimaPediatrics.net for more information. Or you can give them a call, 424-9000. And uh, something I had experience with, you are just getting over it as well. Yes. And uh, the stomach flu is what we're, we're talking about on the Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour. And uh, we talked about maybe how to decipher what it is. Not sure if it is or isn't the stomach flu. But uh, once you figure it out, um, what do you do? Uh, I want to talk about what do you do when your kid's sick. Um, sure. In the first first little bit, you, your kid's vomiting. You notice that they can't keep anything down. Uh, my my initial thought was give them fluids. Yes, that's I give them the fluids, right thing. and and because you don't want them to get dehydrated, right? So, uh, right. At, at, like in moderation, though, right? So, how, what do we need to do in those first so couple of in the hours? first couple of hours? You know, the, the thing that you're going to worry about after the first hour or two, when they're puking every twenty minutes, you realize, uh oh, they might be getting dehydrated. Okay, so how do you tell if they're getting dehydrated? That's a good question. Okay, that's so g- the first thing you look at is, do they have tears? Do they have spit? Is their mouth dry? If their lips are dry but they've got saliva in their mouth, that's good. Are their eyes beginning to su- sunk, sink in? Okay. Are they looking kind of like pasty? Well, they're going to look pasty if they're nauseating yeah, anyway. If they're, yeah. But if they've been puking a lot, they get this kind of yellowish discoloration. It almost looks like jaundice, but the whites of their eyes are white. Okay. When they're dead there, you know they're losing too much bicarb. So those are the things you look at. Are they peeing? Are they putting out pee? Are they peeing? Do they have saliva? Do they have tears? If they're missing some of those, then you're already one foot to the emergency room. Oh, okay. 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 I didn't know that. Right. I mean, you know... Dehydration's bad. Really? How bad is how bad is dehydration for, uh, like, you know, an infant? For an infant, it's bad. Absolutely. It's terrible. But, like, so, like, two years and under? Two years and under, you got to really watch for it. That okay. doesn't mean that every kid gets dehydrated with stomach flu. It doesn't mean they can't puke their heads off for the first two three hours yeah as long as they've got spit and they've got tears you're okay okay and they've got peepees yeah but if they don't have spit and they you know the lips can get dry but if they've got spit in their mouth that's okay but if the lips are dry the mouth is dry they're not forming tears and they're not making a pee then you have both feet in the emergency room gotcha then. okay <laughs> however so what do you do to begin with the first thing you do is you stop feeding them the second thing, and this is solid foods. You're talking no, no food. No solids, period. No food. And no dairy at all. No the dairy. The biggest mistake people make is they feed their, continue to feed their kids formula because they think they need to give them liquids. Okay. The last thing you want to do for a child with stomach flu is to give them milk or milk products. Okay. Not a good move. Breast milk. Even breast milk, although there's a controversy about that. Okay. But the whole issue is how long does it take to wipe out the enzyme that digests milk sugars? Okay. By the way, that en- that enzyme is necessary to digest breast milk too. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. okay. how long does it take? Anywhere from three to twelve hours. It depends on how bad it is and how inflamed this gut got. Okay. So a lot of people will say you can continue to nurse the baby if that's all they take, especially if it's like a four month old, they haven't really started solids or they have just a little bit. You can continue to nurse the baby, but you got to nurse them for short periods. Can't keep them on if they're if they're a thirty minute feed or fifteen on each side. Uh uh-uh. uh, five minutes and off, five minutes and off. No, oh, okay. You got to keep the volume down because if you take a large volume in, a large volume will come back. No out. matter what it is. That's right. Okay. So, and if after breastfeeding your kid you're noticing that it's just not working out, then you got to switch over. Give it about an hour's worth. If it's not working, then switch into Pedialyte. Now, I will tell you point blank, most kids despise Pedialyte. <laughs> Why? Because it's like drinking water with baking soda and sugar in it. Yeah, it kind of. Let's see. How does that taste? Not very good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's the trick. First of all, there are flavored Pedialytes. So always keep some Pedialyte on your, on your shelf, one or two bottles. And when they go bad, just toss them and go on to the next one or use it for god knows what i've actually you know it's cool i've actually fooled my kids i get pedialyte popsicles 
That's the next thing yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. The best thing, even for a little one, although under six months they're not so char- charged with it, but the Pedialyte Pops actually taste delicious. Yeah. They're very tasty, and I, my kids, my grandkids, will eat them for popsicles during the summer. Nice. You know, so uh, Pedialyte Pops are much easier to get across to a kid because the cold makes the taste better. Certainly. Yeah. So that's the other thing you can do. But you got to limit the amount that they allow them to have. And some kids will be really, really thirsty, and they want to drink down eight ounces, and then they puke it back up. No. One ounce every 20 minutes. No more than an ounce every 20 minutes in that first hour. If they do okay with that for over an hour and they haven't puked, you can increase it to two ounces. Okay. And uh, then if they're okay for another hour or two, you can increase it to three. Don't give more than four ounces. So dehydration is a, like one of the main concerns early that in the stomach. That is though. the only real okay. concern, to be honest with you, because most kids will get through stomach flu without too much difficulty. It's the dehydration that gets them going. Yeah. And of course, if they're going from both ends, it's but yeah, then, that's then your dehydration worries are greater. Yeah. And the biggest problem is is that for kids under really age four or five. There's nothing you can give them medically that will stop it. Now, there is something you can give them. It is not over-the-counter. It is prescription. If they're over a year, it's called Ondansetron, also known as Zofran. And it comes in little dissolvable tablets. And it does come in liquid, although the liquid isn't going to do you much good if your kid's puking. Yeah. But the, the good thing about the dissolvable tablets is you can stick it under their tongue and it'll dissolve and be absorbed directly into the capillaries. Oh, nice. So, and that really does stop the pukes. We used to have stuff that came in suppository form. It worked like gangbusters Uh in the old days. Don't ask me why they took it away. I don't know. They said because some people gave their kids too much and their kids had respiratory arrest or something. Well, you know. That's bad. If you abuse anything, yeah, it's going to be a problem. But all the suppository stuff is gone from the market now. That's for weird. Reason, for yeah. reasons I'll never yeah. quite understand. Yeah. Now here's the other tip, and this is something that if you've got a child under age four or five, don't ever do. Okay. If you have a child age four to five, check with your pediatrician first. But if your kid has got both ends going, or if they've really got the bad stomach cramps, and they're under four years old. And they're over four. Oh, over four years. Okay. And they're okay. over four, then Pepto Bismol is going to do the trick. Oh, Pepto. All right. Now you got to be real oh, careful man. with that stuff uh-huh. because it contains aspirin. Oh, okay. And you can get Rye syndrome from it, which is bad. That's not good at all. Yeah. We have a child in our practice who was devastated from a Pepto Bismol overdose. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my he's goodness. He's like twelve now, and he's. He's Holy very cow. severely re- re- retarded and cerebral palsy, all of it because his parents, following faithfully the directions they were given at a clinic, wow, OD'd him. Holy cow. The, the clinic screwed up on that one. Good grief. Okay. So you got to be real careful with yeah. Pepto. You don't want to just use it without talking to the doctor. But if your child's over three or four, depending on their size and everything else, it can be extremely helpful. Okay. Um, All right. The, the other thing you should know about Pepto is that it's also great for traveler's diarrhea. The reason Pepto works so nicely is because it's bismuth subsalicylate, and bismuth and the salicylate are both antiprostaglandins. Prostaglandins are the qu- chemicals that cause your stomach to cramp and pour out fluid. Oh. So okay. if you stop the prostaglandins, you stop the pouring oh. and the cramping. There you have it. So it works. Okay. All right. So we we got the early stages, maybe a little later stages. We'll go we'll go over that next. Absolutely. Sound good? Okay. So uh, this is the Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour on AM twelve twenty KHDS. <music> Don't suffer through another hot summer. I'm Mark Figueroa, CEO of SunPower by Green Convergence. Tired of not living comfortably in your home to avoid high electric bills? Call the solar experts at SunPower by Green Convergence to find out how we can completely eliminate your electric bill with our patented high-efficiency SunPower panels. We are Santa Clarita's largest local solar installer and have been voted best solar installer the last two years. Call us now at 294-9999 or visit sunpowercorp.com slash gc. 
What is that? My latest invention, the Skibby Shibby. Looks like a poorly designed seat belt. Well, I'm always getting tickets for not wearing mine. The Skibby is automatic using these pistons to tighten. And the spikes? Hands-free eating, my friend. Time for a test run. Shouldn't you test it on something else, like a watermelon? Silly. Watermelons don't drive. <laughs> a reminder from SM Sales. Women owned and operated for over 30 years. Remember to click it or tick it. You okay? It works. There's never anything new happening. Cindy's obviously never tried Vincenzo's Pizza in Newhall, featuring the biggest and best pizzas in town. Vincenzo's? There's something new going on, but it's not just pizza. At Vincenzo's in Newhall, they've got something new every day. From pizza and pasta specials to hot subs and oven-roasted chicken, you'll always be satisfied. And now you'll be entertained. Friday nights are karaoke from 6.30 to 9.30, and Saturday nights feature a bluegrass band, the Grateful Dudes from 7.30 to 10.30. Vincenzo's Pizza in Newhall on Lions Avenue for pizza and and fun. Santa Clarita's hometown station, hometown station, AM 1220, AM 1220, KHTS. Ah! I feel good. I knew that I would not. Santa Clarita's hometown station, AM 1220, KHTS. Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour. Health, easy for me to say. <laughs> Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour. On AM 1220 KHDS, we're with Dr. Feldman of Prima Pediatrics. You can go to primapediatrics.net for more information, or you can give them a call, 424-9000. They're over there on Via Princess, right across from Costco in the back over there. So go check them out. And uh, and we're talking uh, stomach flu. Now, uh, we're talking some of the, the stuff that you can do. Make sure hydration is very important. To that start. is the most important practice. The most important thing. So once we get – so our we got our child – and we're giving them an ounce at a time. It's working. We get we up up to two ounces. That's working. What do we do next? So uh, that we have there. If they seem the, to be holding stuff down, if they're holding the stuff down, and it, you gotta you cannot give them more than clear liquids. Now the clear liquids now at this point after two three hours of Pedialyte, you can go to things like chicken broth, tea, Jello, ices without milk in it, that kind of thing. But don't do anything else for another 10 to 12 hours. Okay. Okay, because it'll come back on you. Okay, so don't, so don't just think, oh, okay, my kid's getting two ounces. Let's, you can have a, here's a glass of, here's a giant glass of Milk Gatorade shake. or whatever. Well, no, Gatorade they can do. Yeah. They could do. They, that's the other thing. If you won't get your kid to get Pedialyte, give them Gatorade. Or put an ounce of apple juice into six ounces of Pedialyte. Okay. And they may oh, be able wow. to take okay. it that way. But So you're okay. Once they get it down, uh, you don't give them... You can give them like a, a eight-ounce glass of Pedialyte. Yeah, as long as they haven't puked in the last two, three hours. Okay. But don't give them a hamburger, yeah, for don't, sake. Yeah, don't give them a greasy, nice... Like uh, a breakfast don't burrito. Don't give Probably them not. any solid food. No food. Okay. But my kid's so small, they're going to starve to death. No, they won't. <laughs> I promise you, they won't. <laughs> okay, so you don't want to do anything. You said 10 to 12 hours, you don't want any solid foods. Right. For and sure. If it's nighttime, and usually this happens like right at around 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Yeah, of course. You know, and so it's now midnight and you've gotten them to stop puking. Don't stay up all night trying to force fluids on them. Let them go to sleep. Yeah, okay. And go to sleep yourself. Yeah. And then when they wake up in the morning, now it's been six hours and a total of probably close to 12 hours since the whole thing started. And now you can try more clear fluids, but you can start with things like rice cereal okay, or a little bit of crackers, toast, small amounts. Don't put butter on the toast. So no dairy at all. That includes butter. Yeah, for right now. Okay. For that first 24 hours, we're not going to get anything besides... The brat diet. No, so what no, happens? No. So what happens if you do though? Does it? Do you like go back to square one? You can or you can't. It depends. Some kids will tolerate it. Okay. And then you'll think, oh, that's okay. And then the next time you get stuck. Or your next kid. Yeah. The same, you, you give them the same exact treatment, and then and they they, yeah, they, they, they don't react the same way. Yeah. Exactly. Now the truth of the matter is, is the Academy of Pediatrics says you can feed a kid anything through all this, and it doesn't really make a difference. And they've got these studies to show that it makes a difference. And I'm sorry, folks. They're crazy. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I've been at this for 40 years. And let me tell you something. You don't feed a kid anything. You don't continue to feed the milk. Yeah. Because most kids, if they're older than two or three, not going to have that much lactase enzyme around to begin with. You wipe their stomach out with a nasty little rotavirus or a norovirus, and they're not going to have a milk enzyme for another week. Yeah. Don't give them milk. Don't give them dairy for between three and five days, depending on your background. Now, if you're Norwegian, you're probably going to be okay because northern Scandinavians keep their lactase enzymes all the way through adulthood. Look at but that. 70% of the, pop- of the world's population, all of us, you know, sub-Saharans and all of us South Americans and all of us Ashkenazi <laughs> Jews and everybody else practically. Yeah. Don't. Okay. <laughs> so, for the most part, <laughs> kind of avoid it. Okay. It's a smart move. Okay. But in the meantime, though, what do you do? Your kid's hungry. I want to eat. I want to eat. I want to eat. You can start giving them stuff. Just don't give them a huge meal. And I know that the Academy says that the Brat Diet, which, by the way, has got its name because it goes bananas. That's the B. Okay. Rice, which is the R. A is the applesauce. T is the toast. That's why okay. it's called the Brat Diet. Okay. Bananas, rice, <laughs> applesauce, toast. Let me put it to you this way. How many of us adults are going to be willing to sit down and eat a burrito after we've been puking? Ugh. I don't think so. No. What are we going to go for? That. Broth and crackers, yes. right? crackers yeah. and stuff, yeah. Now, if your kid's really hungry and they want something solid, especially if they have the diarrhea, go for the rice. Okay. Because rice binds the daylights out of you. It will help improve the diarrhea. Okay. So, And if the kid doesn't like plain rice... You put some salt on it, and you put a little cinnamon and sugar. Yum. The kids will love it. They'll go for it. Yeah. Your kid doesn't like tea? No problem. Take, Make the cup of tea, put your two teaspoons of honey in it, and then put a couple heaping teaspoons of tang. Okay. Maybe a dot of cinnamon. The kids think it's the best thing they've ever tasted. Okay. So these are all little tricks to get your kids to take what they need to have. Nice. Okay. So okay. That's the important thing. Oh, man. Oh, just thinking about... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot to take the, in. But. One of the not nice things about parenting. Yeah, yeah. You, when you do like a Google image image search of like parenting, there's no pictures of kids like being sick. It's just like frolicking in meadows and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't tell you about this when when you're. Uh... Well, my mom and dad <laughs> used to divide up the the uh, the duties. My dad got the rear end, and my mom got the top end because my mom couldn't stand the rear, and my dad couldn't stand the pukes. <laughs> okay. So they just divided it up, and it worked. Nice. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. I want to talk about, uh, and we could do this after the break, but I want to talk about maybe how long you can expect symptoms to to keep going, and um, maybe. Yeah, I mean, well, let's just say stick with that. We'll see how long maybe uh, we can expect them to keep going and how long we need to keep them on that diet and stuff like that. So we'll talk about that next okay. on the Prima Pediatrics Healthcare Hour on AM 1220 KHDS. 